Welcome in, everybody. Jeff Joniak along with Tom Thayer from Hallis Hall and Lake Forest. This is Bears All Access brought to you by IGS Energy. Pleasant good evening, everybody. And my broadcast partner, the Super Bowl winning Bear from 1985, headed back out to Jersey later this week after his Thanksgiving meal. Uh, what's on the menu first and foremost? Because you're one heck of a cook, number one. So what are you bringing? What are you bringing to the festivities on Thursday? You know, Jeff, I got three older sisters and an older brother who's married. So that's one thing on Thanksgiving I don't have to cook. <laughs> I just get to enjoy all of what what they offer us. And my problem is is trying, obviously, trying not to overeat, having some self-control. So I'm going to watch a lot of football. I'm going to eat food and uh, just see how the week goes. Three games, triple header, that's number one. But you guys, you, when when the family was all together at Mama's house, uh, it was a turkey first thing in the morning, right? And then another one later in the afternoon? <laughs> yes. My mom made two turkeys, and um, it, was a, it was a double meal for all of us. But, you know, we probably had, you know, 25 to 30 people per holiday that would come and eat of when you include all the family members. And when my mom and dad were alive, it was everybody's priority to be at their house, and that's the way my mom wanted it, and that was a great thing about the holidays. Well, I hope everybody out there will uh, celebrate with their family, enjoy themselves, and uh, enjoy every bit of your Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, the Bears are not playing on Thanksgiving this year, but uh, we've gotten used to it a little bit over the last few years with those trips to Detroit, but thankfully not this year. It'll be a trip against the New York Jets, a team, uh, that is six and four. They've uh, played some good football, Tom. But last week and a couple weeks earlier, the Patriots have, have, have hung some uh, some bad juju on them and continue to do so. They've lost, I think, fourteen or fifteen in a row now uh, to the to the Patriots, and that's uh, raising a ruckus out there out east about the quarterback position. Yeah, it is. You know, this is a highly motivated coach that it has a high level of expectations for every single one of these guys. And so he wants these guys to kind of be attached to his personality and his desire and willingness and accomplishment. So, you know, he puts a lot on these guys. And, uh, you know, so I, I think going forward, it's going to be interesting to see the growth and the, the development of the team as a whole. But they got a lot of question marks about their quarterback. This is a guy that they took really high in the draft. And, you know, because he didn't answer some questions at the podium, now, you know, everybody is kind of attacking him in the, on the social media. But, um, you know, Zach Wilson has a lot of improvements to make, and I maybe he does have to capture the the brotherhood of the locker room to make sure they're all fighting for the same thing. He ranks last in quarterback rating, 33rd in completion percentage, 31st in TD to interception ratio, and 31st in passing touchdown percentage. So it has not worked with a very good defense that many are saying is arguably the best in the National Football League front to back. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah. You know, and unfortunately, I know you're going to bring it up at some time during the show because an Iowa State product was injured in the whole process oh, and yeah. the development of the New York Jets. And His name is think, Brees Hall, big time. His yeah, name is Brees Hall. Brees, I know, I Brees know. Hall. I'm, I'm well aware <laughs> of that. I listened to you compliment him all last year. And, you know, and he's a heck of a football player. And so, you know, when you're developing a young quarterback, you have to have – a total awareness of what the offense can offer you to help a young guy like that grow. And when you go up and you draft him, what was he, the second pick in the draft? I, I oh, don't, Zach I, Wilson. Yeah, yeah Zach yeah, Wilson. Yeah. Is I don't think you want to ignore him this quickly. So, uh, you know, I to me, from, out, from the way outside in, I still think he'll be the starting quarterback this week. Who will be the starting quarterback for the Bears? We don't know at this juncture. We'll find out more tomorrow when everybody gathers up here at Hallis Hall, uh, with a shoulder injury of some nature, he is day to day. That would be QB one Justin Fields. What would you like to see happen, Tom? Even if it's banged up, uh, if he's a, you know he is tough. The kid wants to play. He doesn't want to miss a down. He he was not able to finish last season. He missed five of six for a variety of reasons, uh, and you'd hate to see that happen again in this key developmental year. Well, number one, if he's not a hundred percent healthy. I'm I'm going to be reluct, reluctant to play him. If they are going to play him and he's less than 100% healthy, 
I'm almost going to encourage him or not let him run the ball. And I know that's what everybody wants to see out of Justin, but ultimately it's going to be about how he develops as a passer. And um, that puts more stress and strain on the offensive line because these guys are great, are really good pass rushers. They have multiple guys that can come at you from not only the level of the defensive line, but level two and level three. So um, I, I want Justin to be healthy because I think he's a huge part of the future of the Bears. And if Trevor Simeon had to come in and play, I would be interested to see how he interacts with the, the receivers that the Bears have brought aboard so uh, they can develop and they can provide a serious uh, a big man passing attack. Yeah, the Northwestern product is the backup quarterback, uh, David Montgomery, yesterday and what it would be like uh, with Trevor Simeon uh, versus Justin Fields in this current situation. It would be very different, you know, especially losing a guy like that, and, um, especially losing Justin and who he is and what he means to this team and to this office especially. Yeah, it's going to be... Um, super difficult to not have them, but you know, uh, Coach Getz and um, you know the, the offense. We prepare all those guys the same. So you know, whether it's Nate or Trev or whoever it is, you know, we all prepared to roll, and you know, Justin's always ready to roll too. You know, the thing about it is, what you want to prevent is losing Justin. If he does have some of type of an injury issue, you don't want to lose him, so you don't want to put him in harm's way. And, you know, the, the, con, the consistent development of Justin Fields is where this team is ultimately going when they're competing for the division crown and their division, they're competing in the playoffs and stuff like that. It's, it's going to be with Justin, but if, if they do have to go in with uh, Trevor Simeon, I, I don't expect anything less. I just think there's going to be a different type of uh, format to the way the Bears are going to go back, go out there and call plays and, and run this offense. Uh, Matt Eberflus earlier this week uh, talked about the sting of a losing streak, which now the Bears have only had one win since the last trip to East Rutherford and MetLife Stadium against the Giants. To go through adversity, you have to be hard. You have to be uh, mentally tough. Um, you have to be in a, and be physically tough to go through that. And uh, we're going through it right now. And uh, it's important that guys are really good in terms of having their eyes forward. And I thought we had a real good response from those guys today. And I'm excited about this week uh, in terms of preparing for the Jets and getting going here for this week of uh, work we have ahead of us. Well, they'll be back uh, here tomorrow at Hallis Hall to start that process. Thanksgiving, of course, uh, will be a little bit of a different day with uh, families involved and visitors and then, you know, get right down to it Friday and leave Saturday. Yeah, you know, one thing I'm interested in is when the Bears sent out the media schedule for the week just re re revised is Justin is meeting the, the media tomorrow. And, you know, if it was a foregone conclusion that he wasn't going to play this week, would he still have to meet the media? But uh, and, and are they going to make him answer some questions that maybe – is you don't want to answer. So I, I'm a little bit, I am very interested to see what he says when he meets the media tomorrow. Well, conflicting reports from national NFL media about what that could be, separated shoulder, not a separated shoulder. So um, I, I, we don't know. We're going to wait and find out uh, like everybody else tomorrow. Uh, but we want to thank our producer, Cesar Perez, our, our good friend who used to work with us on Bears Radio Broadcast, does a great job here at The Score. And coming up at 6.30, we'll be joined by former Bears quarterback, Josh McCown. See what he's up to down there in the, in the heart of Texas. You know, I got to say, it was great talking to Mark Sanchez last week because we, you know, at, when we're broadcasters and the, the, the guys are active players, we don't really get a lot of chances to have post-career conversations. And I'm, a, I'm looking forward to talking to him because, you know, you, you admire these guys from afar and then you kind of get to talk to them when they – kind of get into the normal realm of human life like we all do as ex-players. All right, we'll visit with him coming up in just a while. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll take a break here first. This is Bears All Access on Chicago Sports Radio, 670 The Score. Welcome back to Bears All Access. It's brought to you by IGS Energy. Choose clean energy for your home at IGS.com because every good choice adds up to a better world. Jeff Joniak, Tom Thayer on another Tuesday as we count you down to Bears football against the Jets. Uh, coming up at the bottom of the hour, we'll be joined by former Bears quarterback Josh McCown. And it'll be good to talk to him. He's always great to everybody. Uh, 
Uh, as an article that I read uh, a while back, Dan Pompey wrote, Tom, uh, Josh McCown won three good guy awards for three different teams of the 90 he played for. So well, well, well thought of individual, not just uh, as just a dude, but a, a heck of a football player as well. So the New York Jets, what's the plan of attack for a Bears defense that doesn't know who will be the quarterback? They'll probably know a little bit more tomorrow, if not for sure, if it's going to be the young man or if it's going to be – Mike White, who threw for a 400-yard game last year, where they go, he's the number two, really. Joe Flacco has been inactive the past few weeks, but he opened the season and had three pretty good games. Whomever it is, I'm going to take some chances from the defensive side of the ball because you have a lot of really interesting moving parts that you can blitz in the, from the cornerback position, from you know the safety position, both Jaquan Brisker and Eddie Jackson. Jack Sanborn has proved to be a really good power blitzer. They have good speed in Nicholas Morrow. I'm going to I'm going to encourage my defensive line to be more aggressive at the snap of the ball and try to get upfield. If it is Zach Wilson and you put him in a compromised position where he doesn't have all of his perfect fundamentals within each throw, he leaves throws short. Sometimes he sails them over the top. You can create inaccuracies against him. And he has an enormous amount of pressure on him if he is the start starting quarterback this week in New York. And if he doesn't have the type of effort Effort that the press expects out of him, then he will, you know, he is going to be questioned and attacked on the podium for the way he answered some questions last year. And then if it is Mike White or Joe Flacco, I'm going to have the same template of attack that I would against Zach Wilson. I want to challenge each and every one of these guys. And I want to encourage and open up the excitement of the defense to allow them to be more of an attacking defense to see if they can produce some pressure that doesn't necessarily have to be sacks, but if you can compromise the throwing position of any of the quarterbacks, maybe you can turn some of that compromise into interceptions. Uh, the Jets, uh, they have a stretch here of uh, difficulty coming up after this game, uh, so you can look at their playoff chances and say, okay, they're still in pretty good shape. Uh, but they got road games the next two weeks at Minnesota and Buffalo, and four of their final six are on the road. So they are at a crossroads what they do at that position, for sure. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, having the same record as the New England Patriots. So the the message to by Robert Sala, their head coach, has got to be, look, guys, we're still in this. We can really, you know, push forward and, and get to ourselves and keep ourselves in a position where we can possibly keep the playoffs alive. So the Bears have to take all that enthusiasm away from them. They have to go in there and treat the uh, New York Jets like the team that played the New England Patriots last year, last week. If you look at their stats, they were less than impressive. And they put themselves in a position on the offensive side of the ball that they had to rely on a punt return for a touchdown from the New England Patriots to win that game. So I think it's about, you know, the attitude of both coaches. And I like Matt Eberflus because being the head coach here and he's going to be back next year and Ryan Poles and making the decision about all these guys and the type of effort that they give during the game and making sure they're all mentally prepared for if they do get an opportunity to play in the game that each one of these guys they're not auditioning for the other teams they're auditioning for the for the leadership of the Bears. And here's how the Bears are dealing with these losses. The veteran running back again, David Montgomery. I mean, anybody who's a competitor, you know, get, you don't like losing. Um, so you just kind of, it sucks. You prepare, you just, you prepare the best way that you feel like you uh, should. And um, you just fall short. But, you know, you, it's, you're a professional. You still got to come here and do your job. You still got to be a professional. You still got to, you know, walk around with your hair. I know your job. And Justin Jones on finding ways to win, Tommy. He takes it as an individual pursuit first before a team effort. I feel like I feel like winning is like an extrinsic motivation. Like you got to have some menu for you to play this game. You know, go through the ups and downs and still be able to work hard and still be able to come to work. You know, with a smile on your face. It's got to be some kind of intrinsic motivation. You know, to why you play this game. And you know, when the season's not going your way, but you're like trending in the right direction, you know, you still have faith in your team. You know, and you just you just want to put the best foot forward and keep pushing, you know, so we can go get those wins, you know, towards the end. You know, it's two different types of personalities of NFL experience there. You got David Montgomery, who was drafted by the Bears, and that's the only team he's ever been with. 
but the reflection of his work ethic and his desire to be great, his power style of running, his ability to catch the ball out of the backfield, and his willingness to do what's ever asked of him to help this team be better. You know, that's Dave Montgomery, who was born and bred here as a Chicago Bear in his NFL life. Justin has a little bit more experience around the league, and he understands the ups and downs of different organizations and different teams, but he comes in here and he's encouraging his teammates to make sure they stay focused, they work hard, they put in the effort, making sure they're prepared, and I think the way that Justin's played in the last, not you know since he's been here, but most certainly in the last couple weeks, you can see that the game is important to him, but to me, I, I love the leadership of David Montgomery. And, you know, in these last couple interviews, he speaks as a, as a super confident, you know, football player. And I think that's the same reflection that we get out of when we, when we get to watch him play. The game means a lot to David Montgomery. Sure does. We'll take another break here on Chicago Sports Radio 670. The score, this is Bears All Access, and it's brought to you by IGS Energy. Coming up at the bottom of the hour, former Bears quarterback Josh McCown. Stick around, and thanks for listening tonight here on 670 The Score. This segment of Bears All Access is brought to you by Athletico Physical Therapy. Visit athletico.com to request an appointment in clinic or virtually and start feeling better tomorrow. Jeff Joniak, Tom Thayer, coming up at the bottom of the hour. Josh McCown, the former Bears quarterback, a veteran of 19 NFL seasons will join the program. I want to touch on something Albert Breer uh, of uh, SI uh, saying that he's heard that Justin apologized to his teammates after the loss in the locker room and telling them the defense gave the offense a chance and the offense didn't get it done. And the defense says, no, we got you, Justin. We got you. So whether or not that that's uh, something that happened, I, I, could, I could see it. Uh, this team is very close. And they do pick each other up, and there's none of the weirdness that's going on apparently in New York uh, going on here in Chicago. Yeah, but Justin doesn't owe an apology to anybody. Right. They, they understand Justin's commitment. They see a reflection of his work ethic on the practice field, uh, getting there early and staying late. You can see the expression on his face and how much it means to him to be the leader of this football team and take them to the, a new level that they haven't seen in quite a long time. When I first became aware and I read that, I... I felt, I mean, I just, I just didn't think Justin was a guy that needed to apologize. And I hope someone stopped him and said, Justin, listen, we have all the respect in the world for you and with you, and we got your back. And one of the key connections right now, the work put in, is starting to bloom in, in a way that is getting him in the end zone for one, is Darnell Mooney and Justin Fields, the work that's been done there. Uh, Monday night of the Bears coaches show on WBBM. And, you know, those guys spend every practice, you know, 45 minutes afterward on the field, you know, throwing and catching, running the routes that we're running for that particular week, you know, going through the plays and making sure they have their timing down. And uh, they've been working every single week, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday after practice. And I think it's important and it's paying off. Tom, it is. And I'd like to say one more aspect of that, that Justin starting to get – in a, in a position where he's challenging his receivers to make the tough catch. We saw that from Cole Komet last week. Eber Flus on that top. Yeah, I mean, those guys are, are really doing a good job. Like I said, we're building chemistry. Um, it's important that we keep doing that, um, you know, and we spread the ball around. It's important that we keep spreading the ball around to the backs, all the receivers and the tight ends. I look at it as trust because two examples of it, Darnell Mooney's touchdown catch. Justin let that ball leave his hand 11 yards before Darnell Mooney was able to make the catch. So he put the ball in a spot, and he trusted that Darnell Mooney would be exactly at that spot when the ball was catchable. And Darnell Mooney focused on it, made a difficult catch, had a hard landing on his back but ended up with six points. And then it's a trust catch for Cole Komet. He threw the ball up above anywhere a defensive back ultimately cut, could touch it. He knew that Cole Komet was going to take a little bit of a shot from the side, but he knew that he was going to be able to <clears throat> Excuse me. He knew that he was going to be able to touch the football. And Cole went up and just made an amazing catch. All right, so this was also on the coach's <laughs> show on Monday night. Um, Matt Eberflus decided to show the team the game tape in sequence because typically offense goes together, defense goes together. You don't see the game as it's unfolding 
in real time. So I pressed him on why that was the case, why, why that was beneficial. When you show it that way in front of your peers, I think that's very powerful uh -huh. um, because guys want to perform. They want to do well for the guy standing next to him because we got a tight football team. You know, the guys really uh, care about each other and they work hard for each other, and I think it's important to them. Jeff, twice in my career we did the exact same thing. One time we had a snow game that we weren't able to travel home, so Ditka put us all in the main ballroom, and we watched the game in real time, and he ran the projector. It was not easy because we did not win the game, and Coach Ditka did not take it easy on us when we were watching tape under those circumstances. And it was only twice in my career, but I remember him as if we are sitting there today. I think, man, in this case, Matt's idea, while that's probably part of it, was that it is complimentary football. So what happens early in a game is as important as what happened late in the game when they could not score a touchdown late or they gave up the kick return touchdown or the idea that, there have been four return touchdowns in the last four weeks that have made a major difference in the outcome of these last four games. And, and for us, it was criticism in front of your peers made us a closer football team. And it developed camaraderie. And it, it understood, okay, if you can get criticized by the head coach, no matter you're a multi-year all-pro, then anybody can face criticism. And so it allows the young guys to understand that they're not exempt from it, but are either are the veterans. All right, coming up next, we'll be joined by Josh McCown. He'll be talking to us from Texas, where he's uh, working with a high school down there, a former Bears quarterback, an outstanding, outstanding leader, and a lot of the great qualities that you seek in an NFL quarterback and uh, NFL head coach. We'll see where his mind is at on that route as well. With Tom Thayer, I'm Jeff Joniak, Cesar Perez, our producer. Thanks for listening tonight, everybody. This is Bears All Access, and we're brought to you by IGS Energy. Back in a few. This segment of Bears All Access is brought to you by CDW. People who get it, Jeff Joniak and Tom Thayer. Welcome back to the program. We're brought to you by IGS Energy. And on the line from, I'm assuming now, I'm assuming, big fella, down there in Texas, <laughs> right, uh, Russ Rusk, Texas, is this is this right, or am I off base? Where are you at these days? No, you, you hit it square on the head. I'm 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 in Rusk, Texas, sitting right outside of a gym. Um, you know, the the madness never stops. We <laughs> we moved from football to basketball pretty quick. So, um, so yeah, so we're we're already in the gym now. But uh, but uh, yeah, down here in Rusk, how you guys doing? Doing okay, doing okay. Getting ready for a nice Thanksgiving. Hope uh, that's the case for you as well. Now, uh, am I to assume you're also coaching basketball? Uh, no, uh, I, I'm not. I, I took a break from that um, uh, a, few, a few years back. I, I, I coached the boys when they were younger, you know, kind of doing the little dribblers thing and all that business. And we had a pretty good, uh, pretty good squad and the left with a good record. So I left it there. You know what I mean? I stopped <laughs> while I was ahead. Yeah, and uh, and uh, had a lot of fun doing that. So yeah, I do just, remember. Just get to be dad and watch him now. I do remember one story. You you surprised all your. I don't know what team it was, but you did a three sixty dunk uh, during your NFL days, and uh, you you raised some eyebrows with some of the fellas. You had some hops. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Once <laughs> upon a time, so I, I you know not 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 so much anymore. But uh, but yeah, maybe maybe back then. Hey, Josh, I'd like to ask you a question about your encouragement to the young athletes of today. And do you ask your football players to go and choose another sport to play? Or how do you handle um, the encouragement of the rest of their year to either get involved in other sports or just stay active um, in some way, shape, or form? Yeah, I mean, to me... Uh uh competitors compete i think that first and foremost and so i would encourage to play as many things as you can play so uh so you know for me growing up it was going into the gym as soon as, as soon as football was over with it was in the gym playing basketball and and then after basketball it's you know it's track or baseball or whatever kind of spring sports you can get your you get yourself into or, or then you're into the off season and you're training but um, but even if it's not your specialty, I think, you know, so much is lost nowadays with the specialization of, of things to where we go, well, I'm just going to play baseball or I'm just going to play soccer. Or I'm just going to play football and I'm going to, I'm going to work at it, you know, year round. And, and I, I think that, you know, I, I think that the thought of it is right. Like I'm going to get really good at it, but the, I think you're, it's detrimental in the sense that 
the lack of, you know, just general competing and, and then being a part of a team. But the neural pathways that you can create when you're competing, if you're at the free throw line when the game's on the line and you got to go shoot a ball, those are good for those are good situations to put yourself in as a competitor and it pays dividends no matter what sport you specialize in or that's your favorite one. Um, and then I just think the gift of being on a team, you know, again, so many kids – go well you know if i'm not going to start then i'm not going to play and it's like that's that's not really the idea the idea is to go be on a team be be about you know something bigger than yourself and and uh and i think if you're a talented athlete and 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 those things then it's great to cross train your body and your mind anyway so uh so i see tremendous value so i always encourage people you know people stop me in the airport or wherever and hey you know you want my two cents on that stuff i tell them play as much as you can without burning yourself out play as much as you can while you can because it's great for you uh, all the way around. Josh, developing the mind of a quarterback. So there's been a lot of conversations in the last couple of weeks whether Russell Wilson didn't want to wear a wristband, but Tom Brady wears a wristband, mm-hmm. or you know, you, you guys had the listening device in your helmet that kind of helped you with the communication. How do you develop that in a quarterback at that age when they haven't been around the game that long that can maybe carry them to whatever level they're going to be able to play in, but make sure they transfer that information correctly. Yeah, you know, I think those things, you know, when you get into kind of uh, developing that, I think it's just mastering whatever whatever you're being asked to do, you know, to start with. So uh, if you're talking about a junior high quarterback or, you know, and he's starting to learn, you know, learn the position or whatever, it's just mastering the things that you're asked him to do. And then, when you get into kind of the higher levels of things, uh, as you talked about with Brady or with in the wristband type of things, those are those are because we're asking you to do a lot more now. And but still, the requirement is to master whatever we've asked you to do. And um, and people, I mean, the wristband thing is just it's really you know the way the guy's mind works, and it's special to that player. I, you know, some guys um, like to hear it called into them and then repeat it. I, that's how I was an audio guy. Like I like to do that. I like to hear it and then repeat it. Um, some guys want to read it off a wristband. It, it hits their brain better if they read it and they can see it in their mind as they read it. So everybody's different. It just really depends on the player, but what the player is responsible for different than the coach is that whatever we decide, whether it's the wristband or whether it's just calling into you audibly and you, you repeating what I just told you, Whatever that is, you have to know the assignment of the play. And so that's what I would tell a young player is to master the assignment of the play, master those things, and then understand how you learn and and what's best. And then the team can determine, okay, like it's better for you to do this on wristband or it's better for you for us to say it and then you repeat it. So I think it's really more, you know, up to the player and up to the organization on how they're going to approach it. But for the young players, more than anything, it's just master whatever their coach is asking them to do, master that to the best of their ability. And then all of the other stuff is kind of, it's just personal preference. Josh, when you begin installing a system at the high school level, do you begin with the same template that we've learned at the NFL level where, you know, you start the basics of the playbook and then you keep feeding them information or, you know, or is, is, is it, you know, how, what is your, how, how do you feed that information? Yeah. I mean, um, uh, I've only been kind of responsible for it a few times, but uh, the guy with our, our – I wasn't the, not the offensive coordinator. I was just the, the, the quarterback's coach this year. Um, but uh, but I got with our offensive coordinator and said, do you, mind, you know, do you mind if I put us a book together, kind of how we, you know, kind of how we do in the pros where it follows the kind of methodology of how we're going to teach everything. And, uh, and he was completely on board with it. And so we did that actually this year. And I, I wanted to do it more for my own practice of just how, how would I bucket – plays and the teaching method of these plays and, and how they progress and how one built off another and so the learning patterns flow for the kids and and uh, it was a great exercise for myself and I think it, uh, it it paid dividends with our guys too and the kids really enjoyed it and and, um, and so yeah I think it's we don't have the volume you know at the high school level you just don't have the volume right um, now I mean you know that was fun for me to bring my my you know 18 years and you know, twenty something playbooks up to the office and show the high school coaches like this <laughs> okay. is what it this is what it looks like. This is what day one install looks like in the West Coast offense, you know, and it, it looks like the whole high school offense in one day, you know. So um so it's a little bit different but uh but at the same time, um the methodology of it is really, really, really good. So similar in that regard, but just not not quite the volume. Josh McCown, our guest here on Chicago Sports Radio 670 The Score. This is Bears All Access, brought to you by IGS Energy with top there, Jeff Joniak from Hallis Hall in Lake Forest. Josh, the, 
we know you've had sons that have played. You got one at uh, Colorado, and you've managed to find the time, and you always have, of trying to work your way around some area of football, even while you're with other uh, teams. As a pro, you wanted to always keep coaching. Do you ultimately want to be in the NFL, and do you want to be a head coach? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think so. Uh, you know, uh, Jeff, I've, I've <laughs> you look at you look at uh, my career and the number of stops, and so the, that old saying that you know we plan and God laughs, I think you know applies to to my career as much as anybody's, and uh, and so uh, so yeah, I, I enjoy coaching and being around the game, and just just as I said with the with the the uh, the, the multi sport thing with kids, just being a part of a team, being a part of an organization. And, uh, and, and, you know, getting, getting together with a group of people and saying, okay, let's go try to accomplish something together. Let's go try to do something greater than ourselves because the best version of ourselves always exists in selflessness and selflessness always exists best on teams. And so, so I just enjoy that part of it. And, uh, and if that path leads me to be a head coach someday, that'd be awesome. Um, but, uh, but I just enjoy being a part of a team. So I really don't care what the role is. Um, I just, I just enjoy, you know, all assets of joining an organization you know I've done, I've done it so many times but just watching how the how that team takes shape and uh and then finding the pieces of of how you know where where can you plug in something and, and make it better how do you how do you grow this position how do you get that better i think that's those are all fun challenges um so you know maybe one day we'll see but uh but yeah i do you know definitely see you know myself being around the game in the future for sure did the jeff saturday hiring an in indie uh, what is, you know it had a lot of reactions in different ways from a, a different groups of people as an ex-player who's put his whole life in the NFL o- over 19 years and uh, nine different teams and success along the way. How do you feel about that? Yeah, you know I, I think uh, every there's 32 of these things and every these these, these uh, owners have the right to do whatever they want with the team. So we kind of all, I always have to start with that caveat that they can do whatever they want. Um, and, and I will also follow that by saying uh, we can we need to continue to uh, examine and make better the hiring practices of our league. Okay, so um, so I think that's that's paramount also. And then that said, um, and once we understand that, uh, I think the fearlessness to step up and go, okay, I'm going to go out there and, and do something that's that's never been done before. I just appreciate that, and I think that's part and parcel to to good leadership. You know, right, wrong, or indifferent of what you believe about. Uh, Jim Ursay, I just think good leadership in general is, is there's a fearlessness to go. This is what I believe, and I don't care what anybody else thinks because this is what I believe is the right thing, and I'm going to move forward in this direction. So in their case, that was hiring just Saturday. So I think that in and of itself is is uh, respectable. I get probably where the where the coaches are coming from, you know, very much so. Where where if you're sitting there and you're uh, you know an assistant coach that's been you know you hope for that opportunity you you work your butt off for it I understand that. you know I think I think it resonates probably with players too because I've been the quarterback sitting in the room where you draft a young kid and that kid you know leapfrogs you and goes straight to the front and yeah. he's a starter and you're like dang it man I've been waiting for this opportunity for you know whatever so I think I think we do it every year in the draft you know people you know I, you know I know that was a big deal with all these other coaches and you know, people saying all these other coaches have been waiting their turn, waiting their turn. I, I get that, but we do it every year in the draft, and we have no problem throwing a, throwing an inexperienced college kid right to the front of the line. So, um, so I think that's part of that's just part of this business, unfortunately. Um, now, I, and I think we do that because we see a talent in that person, and so obviously they saw a talent in, in just Saturday that they believed in, and they they made that decision. So, so I certainly respect the the opinions and and the feelings of those guys because, like I said. You know, players, especially the older you get as a player, you you feel it. You know, when they bring in somebody else, they bring in somebody else. All those things happen, so you understand the perspective of those guys. So, I don't think there's any right way to do it. But like I said, there's 32 of them. They run the teams the way they want to run them, and uh, and so you just have to kind of let it go the way it goes. But you know, hope hope the best for Jeff and hope the best for that organization. I love Frank Wright, and so I was bummed that that happened to him more than anything, and uh, sad to see that happen. But uh, but you know. Um, We'll see. I mean, it may be changing the landscape of the league. You never know. We'll see. We'll see how Jeff does. Josh, through all your experiences throughout the NFL, do you have a best experience and uh, an experience that was less than the best? <laughs> well, here, I'll tell you a good one. Uh, the, 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 I mean, the, most of them are less than the best. But here's my here's my one. I, I, sh- I shared this the other day, and this will, this will hit home because this is like 
probably 2010, 2011. Okay, 2011 probably. So almost, what is that, 11 years ago or so. It's, it's this time, 11 years ago. All right, I get signed to the Chicago Bears. All right, and I'm I'm thrilled. And uh, and it's the day before Thanksgiving, and I ate somewhere out in uh, Lake Forest or, or Vernon Hills, somewhere out there. I ate at a seafood restaurant. It's like the only place <laughs> open uh, for Thanksgiving. But that day, this was less than the best, all right? That day, we're in the scout team practice, all right? And I had been there like on a Wednesday. I got there on a Tuesday evening, practiced Wednesday, but didn't take any scout team reps. Thursday, Thanksgiving Day, we go in there, we have that quick practice. You guys know how it goes. And we're out there, and the weather was bad. You know, I mean, it was like Chicago weather, which I mean, which was probably like a nice day in Chicago. But but it was just the, the wind's blowing sideways. And, and I'd been there for a day, so they didn't give me any reps. So the Thursday, I get out there, and they're like, hey, take some scout team reps today. So I'm like, cool. I can, I can get, you know, I've been in the league 10 years. I can get in there and read a card. And so uh-huh. it's like, you know, probably 25 degrees. And so sure enough, you know, and I don't have the biggest hands in the world, okay? So I, I'm always, I always know exactly what the weather is, okay? Um, because, you know, if there's moisture in there, I, just, I, have to, I have to prepare, right? So I get in the huddle, and the, and the, and the stinking play on the card that I get in the huddle is uh, it's a flea flicker, all right? So I'm like, oh, crap, man. It's a flea flicker, which is the hardest thing to do when you have small hands to grab the ball and get the laces right and get it downfield. So it's a flea flicker. So we're up, ball's on the right hash, and we run this flea flicker, and the ball gets flipped back to me, and the wind is howling. It is gray and cold and a little precipitation there, and it's howling. And I throw, I throw the ball, and – I mean, it looks like I punted it. It's terrible, <laughs> and it goes from the right hash, and I think it lands on the on the on the left sideline, like outside the numbers on the left side. <laughs> like nobody gets close, and, and Jeff, it's dead silent, like crickets. And somebody, I think it was, I think it might have been Lance Briggs, but somebody goes, "Where the hell did you find this guy?" You know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that was that was less than the best for me, like. You know, of all the moments, you you know, I was out of the league trying to get back in. I finally get back in with the Chicago Bears, and uh, you know, the first pass on the practice field was was a wild one on a flea flicker. So, um, so, but it's I think about that now every Thanksgiving, and I was sitting in you know, huh. Captain D's or some some seafood restaurant out in Vernon Hills, uh, you know, Thanksgiving night by myself eating, going, man, I'm probably gonna get cut after that throw, <laughs> um, but thankfully it worked out. And the team was headed to Oakland uh, that uh, that weekend. So I'm just looking at the, the, the game logs right there. That's right. And you started right. later in the season the last couple of games against the Packers and uh, the Minnesota Vikings. Got it all right here. That's right. We, hey, would you, we have right. a lot more to talk to, to you about. Do you, do you have the time to give us another 10 minutes? Yes, yeah, let's do it. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back with Josh McCown. Thank you so much for your time. This is Bears All Access on Chicago Sports Radio, 670 The Score. Calling all Bears fans, get the ultimate VIP fan package with Chicago Bears VIP. Secure a game ticket and appearance from Bears legends and more by visiting ChicagoBearsVIP.com. Another segment uh, graciously from Josh McCown, our guest, former Bears quarterback, uh, that uh, 11 through 13 seasons and then hit free agency and uh, kept on going, man. And I just looked this up because I want to get your perspective on today's quarterbacks, including ours right now, Justin Fields, uh, the dynamic escapability and running ability uh, the 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 most you ever ran in a game was in 2013 you were with Arizona taking on Carolina six carries and a, a career high 48 yards rushing and a rushing touchdown and the kind of math you're seeing right now and I'm assuming uh, because I know you do watch a lot of NFL football right I mean have you watched a game yeah. with Justin have you watched how some of these young quarterbacks are playing the game these days and what do you think about yeah, it? Yeah, so um yeah, so yeah, I have. Um so for for one real quick and it's this this is the old shameless plug. Um <laughs> I partnered with Underdog uh-huh. Underdog Fantasy, Underdog Fantasy, and I am not uh I I'm not a big fantasy player. Uh um uh, I have people tell me I've I've helped them out that twenty thirteen year with the Bears. I've helped a lot of people win and then I've helped a ton of people lose. So um <laughs> so, so that's my experience with fantasy. But we partnered with Underdog Fantasy, and what we started doing, and you can check it out on YouTube, just just search uh, Underdog Fantasy in the show Scheme, all right? And Josh Norris is the host, and, and Josh McCown, myself, I, I, we break down plays. And so we did, Justin, 
a couple of weeks ago. And so Bears fans, go check that out. I think you'll really enjoy that. Um, and I'll give you the, the cliff notes here is I think he's a terrific player. Um, and I think you, you, you said it, Jeff, the, the running, uh, the, the way that the schemes are now that we run with these, with these young quarterbacks, uh, I think it would certainly have, have helped me move the football a little bit better as a young player. Um, but uh, the, what, we, what we have to be careful of, and, and you know, we're experiencing this in real time, is just the wear and tear that it creates for this, you know, the position. And I still think you have to win. It's physics, man. I think you have to win throwing it from A to B from the pocket. And I think the biggest runs are always going to come, like the big one against the Dolphins a few weeks ago. The, the, the biggest runs are always going to come in the unscripted run game, in the scramble. And off the scramble, and uh, and so it, it you know so the quarterback still there's a premium on uh, throwing it from the pocket and playing from the pocket. Now that said, these quarterback driven runs that we're seeing more and more, uh, I think can can really benefit uh, young young players, and we're seeing it more and more with the with with the guys that can that can handle it. Their bodies can handle it, and we're getting more and more players from the college ranks that have the physical tool set to to, to handle it. But um, but it does. You have to understand it comes with a premium, and uh, and. You want to limit the hits that those guys take, and I think those guys got to be really smart when they carry the ball. Is when they get into the open field to get back down. Um, you know, on, on the show I talked about it. There's a there's a play he breaks into the secondary against Miami, and then he quickly slides. And I think that's what you're looking for. You know, uh, in these quarterback driven runs. Um, but uh, but I think he's a fantastic player. I, I think the skill set is there. Um, you know, to to win both from the pocket and to move him around and, and do some things um, outside the pocket. But, uh, but it's, just, it's just being judicious about it because, the, you know, we want, we want Justin Fields to be the quarterback for the Bears for the next 15 years, right? I mean, I think everybody would love that. I don't think that, that those things can be realities if we're running these guys too much. And they're over, they're, 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 over time, the hits just add up. We see it with the running back position. And so, you know, we got to be smart about that. And, uh, you know, it's not just the Chicago Bears. It's every team that can, that can utilize a quarterback and utilize his running skills. We're seeing it with, with Hurts and Philly. Uh, so um, so, uh, so that, that's my opinion of it. I think, I think that, you know, we've got to be uh, smart about how we develop and how we bring them along. Um, the easy thing to do early is to run them to generate offense. But you you, you got to be careful not to rob Peter to pay Paul and go, okay, well, I'm going to do this, but at what expense? And then, at years five, six, seven, when the guy needs all the throwing reps to win the game, we, we took those throwing reps away because we were running him early. So there's a there's a balance. I think uh, Luke Getzey and those guys are figuring that out. I believe they will figure that out, and uh, and hopefully uh, we'll see a healthy Justin Fields leading the Bears for many years to come. Josh, in all the different roles as a quarterback in the NFL, whether you're a starter and you have a backup or you're a backup to the starter and you guys have similar traits and you kind of understand the offense through the quarterback's eyes, would you give advice or what would you be if you were Trevor Simeon and you're a backup to this system, you don't get very many reps, but you're watching Justin Fields in front of you. How do you as a quarterback get ready if you are inserted in the lineup this week yeah. or even down the road? Yeah, that's a great question, Tom. I think you have to have – you have to understand the offense. You have to know – you, you have to have your plays ready, right? I mean, even even way back when, you know, backing up Jay, I knew, like, the way that Jay Cutler moves the football and the way that I move the football are going to be two different things because Jay has a whole bag of throws, you know, you know that he can go to as far as just how, how he would throw, uh, you know, off-platform and all these different things, whereas for me it was like, man, especially at that point in my career, I need to be in the pocket. I need, to, I need guys to be where they're supposed to be, and I need to be able to, you know, to, to, to process, play fast, get the ball out of my hand. And so you understand that as a backup. And, uh, and I think that's, that's critical is just, you know, you know, the old saying, know thyself. Know who you are, all right? And, and I know Trevor Simeon knows that. Like, he knows, hey, man, we're not running quarterback sweep with Trevor Simeon. Luke Getzey knows that. You know, okay, we're going to move the football, but it's going to be different. And there's a skill set that Trevor has that's, that's kept him in the league this long. And I think he's a very, he can be a very good player, but it's just operating within that. The biggest part of it is getting the other guys that maybe not have had to execute some of those plays as much because they're doing different off, a little bit of a different offense with Justin is getting those guys on you know up to speed because you, like I said the receivers everybody it's a holistic approach with like hey I need you to be if the, if the route says 18 and in I need you to be right there right on time because um, because I need, I have to throw the ball from the pocket like I'm not going to run around and generate offense if you're not there and you miss and we miss that rep it hurts our team. So I think that's the biggest uh, hill to climb when you go from a quarterback change in this instance where the skill sets are so different 
is it's really the guys around them that have to really rally and go, okay, we got to, you know, be, be on top of it with the details of these plays because these are the plays that are going to help us win the game. Josh, great stuff. If you could just give me 30 seconds on a couple of nuggets from an article Dan Pompey wrote. Rod Marinelli, you, you worked with him. When he was the Bears yeah. defensive coordinator, he left notes in your locker to inspire you about coaching. Can you give me one note that inspired you about coaching? Do you remember? Man, so, so many. Uh, one of my favorite ones that Rod does is just the cycle of the snap. Yeah. And it just kind of takes you through the mental process. Uh, and I, we only have – 10 seconds, but it just takes you through the mental process of how, how a player should digest a snap, process what just happened, and then move to the next snap. And it was always little things like that that Rob was dropping in, in my locker and, hey, you need to be thinking about this, you need to be thinking about that. And really up until that point, and, and you know, so I'm so thankful for – I'm so thankful for that miserable Thanksgiving day where Lance Briggs made fun of me because I, I got back in the league and I got to be around great men like Rod and Lovey and Chris Ballard and, and men that started just – to pour into me and say, hey, you should think about coaching. You should, you really need to think about this. And then, you know, up until that point, it really wasn't on my radar. But those little, you know, encouragements along the way, uh, you know, have helped me kind of it, – it allowed me to go into the back half of my career, really, guys, with that mindset. Like, I, I didn't know I was going to get to play eight or nine more years. I thought, you know, every day I walked into Howard Hall, I thought, this is it, man. I'm, mm-hmm. you know, I'm so thankful to be here. This is my last day in the, in the NFL. And so, um, so the encouragements from Rod and those guys, I got to, you know, spend – you know, from 2011 to, you know, to 2020, my last season in the league, thinking about it like a coach, approaching every day like a coach and processing, you know, team meetings and all these things like a coach. And so I'm very thankful for those guys encouraging me. We hear from Coach Eberflus almost every day, cycle of the snap. So uh, that's a Marinelli guy as well. All right, Josh, we got to no go. Doubt about it. We appreciate you. Hope we can do this again sometime. We have a lot more to talk about. And happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. Love it. Likewise, guys. Have a great one. Appreciate it. That's going to do it for tonight's show. Oh, man, so many people to thank. And also great seats available to see your Bears this season at Soldier Field. Get your tickets at chicagobears.com slash tickets. Thank you to Cesar Perez and the folks at The Score and to Josh. We'll talk to you Sunday in New York on WBBM against the Jets. 9 a.m. pregame noon kickoff. Stick around. More ahead here on The Score. And thanks for listening, everybody. This has been Bears All Access on Chicago Sports Radio 670 The Score. Good night. Thanks for listening to this Chicago Bears Network presentation of Bears All Access. Podcasts are available on ChicagoBears.com and on iTunes or download the official Bears mobile app. Bears All Access has been brought to you by IGS Energy and sponsored by Miller Lite.